Hello everyone. Welcome back once again. My name is Rico and of course this is the Gold Standard Group and we share information here that you might like. You might want to hear the things that we have to say here so we appreciate you being here. Today is a special day. It is my birthday so I am celebrating another year of life on this planet and what I'm going to do on my birthday for you, for all of you, is I'm going to give you a gift. All right, I'm going to give you this gift of unwrapping what's going on with the mind-based white paper because people asked me to break down the mind-based white paper. Now, real quick, I don't want y'all to get all excited about me doing mind-based videos because I'm not planning to do more than like five of these things because I really want you here to get information about great projects, projects that we actually believe in. But there is so much interest in this project, I feel it's my duty to break things down for y'all. Have you ever heard that term, the banana and the tailpipe? <laughs> well, this is something like a banana and a tailpipe, and I'm gonna break it all down to you right after the, you know what, I'm not even gonna run the intro because we got too much stuff to go through. We ain't got time to waste. All right, so first thing I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, about minting cryptocurrency. It is the process of generating new coins by authenticating data, creating new blocks, and recording the information onto the blockchain. In this case today, for the things that we're going over, we're referencing the Ethereum blockchain because that's what the Embase token is running on, the smart contract. So let's go through all 63 pages of this white paper. Not all pages have information on it. There's a lot of charts and pictures that we will ignore, but we're going over the pages that I thought were the most significant. Page three, the forward, he's setting the story up based on the failed project in the past and using the current story of uh, Bitcoin mining, polluting the environment, you know, proof of work is bad. He's setting up his story and how now he has a solution to the problem. Page four, the problem. So here's the problem that he's piggybacking off of, which is crypto mining. You know that crypto mining takes up a lot of electricity. And what he's saying is that his token Embase doesn't consume that type of electricity. He has the solution to the problem with Embase. But in fact, we showed you on the Ethereum blockchain when the Embase tokens were produced over 35 days ago. And at that time, Ethereum was still proof of work, which means that when Harold Seitz executed the contract for the Embase project, he was using proof of work, which did consume electricity and resources and probably polluted the environment according to their thesis. CTP, creative token production. And with the CTP tool, anyone can create the new tokens with their computer or smartphone, giving the impression that you are creating a token that's really already been created. That is a false impression, in my opinion, from the start. You're building your case on the idea of uh, mining cryptocurrencies, using proof of work, pollutes the environment, but your whole project started on a proof of work chain Page seven, the creative token tool makes you think you're generating or creating the token from your computer or smartphone. But in fact, that token is already created. It's already been minted sitting in Harold Sites wallet. He's also looking for people that don't have any previous knowledge about cryptocurrencies. That's a red flag right there. Page eight, the Ethereum address that's published here in the white paper doesn't go anywhere. It's a fake address. How do I know? I went out myself and looked. Search not found. Page 11, exaggeration of the number of Bitcoin wallet addresses. They say there are billions of wallet addresses. How do I know? I can go out and look at the actual number of Bitcoin wallet addresses, which is about 84 million. Now on page 16 and also in previous pages, the calculation basis, uh, here Harold Seitz is giving the value of the token $6.50. He is creating the $6.50 price point really from nowhere it could be anything he just made it six dollars and fifty cent and then you can see uh even here in the calculation basis there's a typo on how they use the currency value so again on page 17 a reference to generating a token with their own energy through the walk program you know again a misconception that you are creating a token page 18 charts that are very difficult to read if you don't really understand what all these numbers mean, then they really mean nothing. 
Now on page 20, they talk about upgrading your Mindbase wallet to a silver, gold, or platinum status to create the token faster with our CTP Mindbase system. Now on page 21, they give you the options for the packages. Silver status wallets, you need 50 Mbase tokens in your wallet uh, for at least three months or 90 days, same thing. Gold status, you need 200 Mbase tokens. Platinum status requires 500 Mbase tokens. Or you can go the option two where you don't buy any Mbase tokens and it's all free. You just are using your wallet into the system to track the fees. Well, based on their period of time calculation, uh, you would not live long enough, I don't believe, to create that many tokens uh, in order to achieve that status uh, if you go the free route. On page 24, more charts, more confusing numbers, people that don't understand what's going on, just more confused. Again, the reward program doesn't have realistic numbers and things that represent real value, in my opinion. More on page 27, charts and numbers that uh, for the regular person, they're not gonna understand, but I started understanding a little bit more about how uh, this re reward program is intended to work. And on page 19, again, the CTP algorithm, in my opinion, is some more BS. The more tokens that are generated, which have already been generated, they're already sitting in Herosite's wallet, the higher becomes the price, which I don't know how you can say that that's possible. Just because you got these tokens, the tokens are already here. They don't, they're not valuable right now. They have no value. Uh, so how can you say that they're gonna get more valuable over time uh, and that's the fee that must be generated in each wallet gets higher due to the algorithm. Okay, I need you to explain that to me. And on page 33, uh, the price regulation tool, uh, you know, I don't think it's gonna be effective because it's regulating the price of a worthless token. There's no value behind the token, so it doesn't matter how many tokens get burned, it's not gonna create value from a valueless token. And then on page 34, they kind of switch from English to go into German with some of the headings, die technology, but the, the technology that they're using references a lot of website and front end and database uh, technology, but very little blockchain related stuff. You see web three there, but that's a buzzword right now. Uh, I don't see anything referencing solidity, which is actually the language to design smart contracts and run them on Ethereum. And on page 40, Harold Seitz describes himself as an idea generator and entrepreneur and CEO of a company. And his intention is clear uh, right here because he says he would like to provide a new special way to produce, create, generate tokens with CTP. It's very creative, I must say. Uh, and he wants to create new cryptocurrency assets assets spelling spelling problem right there assets harold and he wants to create value in embase by using the transactions of other people's wallets and maybe even your own uh and that's how he's putting value into embase which is crazy to me uh, he, he's either a uh, mad scientist or an evil genius i don't even know what to call it right now uh, but the third factor here, and this is what really got me, y'all, is ethics. He actually says this. I would like to make a real contribution to enabling people to live independent, free, and self-determined lives. I believe that. But his ethics right now through this project, you can just throw it in the trash, yo. Just throw it in the trash, in my opinion. Uh, you could just left that out all the way because ethically, you need to be honest about your coins and your project and your intentions. And I don't think these are clear intentions. I did some research on the team members on page 41, but I went out and looked for uh, managing director of IT, Gollum Kibria Khan. And I couldn't find anything on this MD uh, managing director, but I did find a medical doctor uh, with the same name, Gollum Kibria Khan. Uh, I, I looked at all the different pictures of these these wonderful Indian gentlemen, and I did not find any images that matched our our Kibla Khan here in uh, this white paper. All right, but I did find Brand Push, and that is not this woman's name, Brand Push. 
That is actually the name of a public relations company, Brand Push. Uh, you can get your idea or your story featured on Fox USA Today and 200 news sites. The software engineer here, let's, let's go into uh, Mahadi Muhammad Shibli. And I did find him on LinkedIn. I believe this is him. I don't know how many people, I know there's a lot of Muhammads, but I never heard of a Muhammad Shibli. Just, just, you know, all, with all respect to my, my Muslim brothers and sisters, but I never heard these combination of names put together. So this has got to be the guy, but he says he's a blockchain and backend engineer with one year experience. He's got solidity. He's got web three and he has a big interest in financial technology. So I say, okay, that's pretty good. That's, that's cool. All right. I like that one year. That's really not a whole lot of time. Um, you know, but okay, I'm, I'm cool with that as long as you are smart, but then I further go down and I find that this guy is a carrot bar software solutions engineer. He developed the data pipeline to FinTech parse, store, analyze, and generate transaction graphs on Bitcoin and, and on Ethereum transactions for any given wallet address. So that's good. That, that is referencing this project right here. Definitely an obvious link with Muhammad. Uh, Shibli, so we know that this is the gentleman that's being referenced here. All right, so we found him, check. All right, he's got one year experience. All right, then I went after uh, MD Arafarda Rahman, and we found him also on LinkedIn. Uh, if this is the right MD Arafat Rahman, uh, he's a test uh, analyst, senior analyst at Bank of America. This is uh, past work for one year, seven months. Quality, quality test engineer, automation engineer, all right, all the good stuff that we look for, but we don't know if this is the right guy. All right, so we're gonna, you know, we'll leave that one neutral. And we found Mr. Islam also on LinkedIn. He's a software developer in Silicon Valley, uh, but also from Bangladesh. Uh, so I don't know if this is the right person for the project. There is no um, indication that he's linked to Harrow Sites or anything like that. And then I went out to look for Nantu Das, a lead software engineer, which I could not find on LinkedIn, but found this on a round deal. Nantu Das, programmer at One Call Solutions Limited. I don't know if this is the same person, but it's the only programmer also headquartered in Bangladesh. Now let's talk about Rima Islamova, web designer here. And if you go to the Mindbase website and scroll all the way down to the bottom, you could see that right here, uh, this is the website designer rear art, rear art. So if we click on that, that'll take us out to the web designers webpage, rear art. And the graphic designer for the Mindbase project is Rima Ismailova. I think I pronounced the name right. There she is. Now also on the bottom of page 41, they tell you what they need. They need young new people who can see and understand what's happening in the world right now, which everybody can. But I think they are, they're looking for people that are inexperienced, young and inexperienced is really what they're saying, uh, to come into Embase and help them build up value, uh, perceive value into the project. And then again, here on 42, they go into more calculating, more talking about what the token distribution looks like the total of 250 million pieces, which already exist in, in somebody's wallet, probably Harrow sites. And again, on page 44, um, driving home that 650 price, that $6.50 price, that perceived unrealistic value, more charts on 47. Again, hard to understand, hard to break down. And on page 51, even in the first statement in the summary, creating in base does not harm the environment as it only uses the energy that's already available is just not true because all 250 million tokens were created on proof of work Ethereum over 35 days ago from today. And I've already showed you, you can go to Etherscan and you can see exactly when the tokens were created. 250 million tokens were created 46 days ago uh, on July 28th. Uh, on this block, on this transaction, we can look at the actual block that Embase was created 46 days, seven hours ago. And the contract was launched 
for 0.015 Ethereum, about 25 bucks. That's what it cost Harold Sites to launch the Embase. And on, and on page 55, they talk about burning tokens starting September 9th. Uh, the CTP price, again, he's drilling that price home. You know, that this is what the token is supposed to be valued. He's creating value out of nothing and saying this has value. And to me, it doesn't matter how many tokens get burned. If you're burning a token that has no value, then what you have left over still has no value. And now he throws in a new phrase called simple time protocol on page 56, which doesn't mean anything because proof of stake is people staking uh, their real assets on a network to validate blocks and transactions. So on the Ethereum network uh, is going to be Ethereum. You have to stake Ethereum to validate blocks. Uh, you're not validating any blocks on any blockchain uh, by using uh, mind-based tokens. It's, that's just not how it works. It doesn't work that way. And I don't want you to think that. So they created a new term called uh, simple time process to uh, measure the time and transaction fees between block creations and all kinds of stuff. More words to confuse people that don't understand what's really going on. Uh, POS, STP don't go together. It don't matter. From page 58 on, he's talking about games and game creating virtual games and things like that. And people who buy the game or interact with the game that use M-based tokens, the tokens get burned. Now, Harold Sites can build a game that people like and they play it and they want it. Now, that's how you create value. And if that game is using M-based tokens, then possibly we can start seeing value in M-based through this way. And maybe them burning these, this token uh, may help the price. Uh, but from here on, Harold Sites is talking about building games and NFTs and launching NFTs and things like that. So if people want to buy other types of property with M-based tokens because they want that other property, then this is a possibility that over time that maybe some value can be built into M-based. And then the last thing I want to bring up is that uh, on page 60, uh, in the first sentence, if the price on the stock exchange falls more than 10%, then the not yet created tokens will be burned. Now that's confusing. More typos, more errors in use of words i understand he's a german gentleman and all of that stuff but this you can't put a piece of paper out there like this on a project like this that you expect to be billions of dollars and that's it folks i don't have much more i want to talk about uh, i may do one or two more videos just to put the nail in the coffin and put this baby to bed because i want to get back to bringing real good information that people i think can use uh valuable blockchain systems valuable coins i want to continue building my own ecosystem and even gs50 is better than this mind based crap i mean gs50 at least has bnb held in a reserve that backs the token you know or matic or ethereum same thing held in reserve in a smart contract backing the tokens in circulation you know Come on, Harold. I mean, if you wanted to put something out, we could have worked on something together, bro. Uh, you could have put some of that money behind a real project, behind a real project. All right, ladies and gentlemen, take care. I'm going to enjoy my birthday. We will have our meeting tonight. 9 p.m. Eastern will be on tonight. Join us. It's going to be informal tonight because it is my birthday, but I will be there. Let's talk. Let's celebrate. Let's get this bag. Let's get this money. Let's build this wealth. I'm out of here. Take care.